OK, let's get more now on England's T20 World Cup success. We can head back to join our reporter, James Cole, who is still at Lords for us. Very good morning to you, James. Morning, yes, England, the first team to simultaneously hold the men's 50 over and 20 over World Cups and the mastermind behind the latest triumph, Rob Key, England's director of men's cricket. Rob, how proud are you, first of all, with what the guys have achieved down in Australia? Very proud. I, I found it very stressful watching. I wouldn't say I'm the mastermind behind it all. I mean, this has been a, something that started from, what, 2015. Owen Morgan, who was commentating and working for Sky out there, he's been a massive part of why they've done it. And the same with then Josh Butler, Matthew Mott, how they've taken it on, really. So full credit to them. And Moen Ali, who's a massive part of that leadership group. Um, they're the ones who have masterminded it, really. And I think Josh, in, in particular, has got every decision, every big decision I think he got right. That sort of gut feel that he has has been incredible and that's what's got them there. They've been able to adapt. I reckon they've become more adaptable in this World Cup than we've seen England's white ball team. As good as it's been, they've moved on, they've taken it up a notch. And there's some of the reasons they've done it. It's because of Joss, Mo, and what Matthew Mott has brought to it. But you did make the decision to split the coaching roles and the captaincy roles and that seems to be paying off. Yeah, but in a way, that, that was an easy decision to make because you look at the schedule. I mean, they're now going to go and play. They've just, I've just spoken to them, actually, and they're just flying to Adelaide where they've got another series starting. Then there's a test series after that. And the best thing about it now is that Matthew Mott has done nothing but think about white ball cricket. When the test series was going on in the summer, all he was thinking about was white ball cricket, how do we win the World Cup? All Brendan McCullum has been thinking about now is how do we win in Pakistan? So that decision, which was very evident that you had to go down that way because of what had happened before and the way the schedule is, has meant that hopefully we can become more consistent and win more trophies. And to win more trophies, what needs to be done now? We immediately look to <laughs> India, don't we? Are you already planning for India? And how does this team evolve the 50 over World Cup next year? I think we'll just try and enjoy it for a minute before <laughs> we start thinking about that. And you never look too far ahead, I don't think. So we will, in the next planning now, we'll always, you work back from that 50 over World Cup, like we did when we were picking teams in the summer and certainly in that Pakistan series, it was working back from the T20 World Cup. And we'll do the same thing. So everything we'll do, we'll just evolve it now and it'll become about trying to win out there. But for the moment, I think we've just got to sort of just smell the roses really and enjoy what's been an incredible achievement from an unbelievably good white ball team. Unbelievably good. Are they the greatest white ball team now? Because no other team's held both trophies. Uh, you're always sort of, you know, when you're younger, all the teams you watch when you're younger, that great Australian side with Shane Warne, Ricky Ponting, people like that, they were as good as I've seen. This team, you know, if they keep on doing it, we keep winning trophies, they could be one of the best that we've seen. Certainly one of the best English cricket teams, one of England's better sporting teams. But it's just not the start of something. We're right in the middle. There's a lot of players that are senior players now, like Joss Mo himself, Ben Stokes. And now it's about trying to make sure we can maintain this with people like Harry Brook coming through, Sam Curran, an unbelievable cricketer, Sam Curran. So if we can get that right over the next few years, hopefully we'll have some more success. You mentioned Ben Stokes, once again showing when the <laughs> pressure's on, he can deliver. He's retired from 50 over cricket. Any chance he might change his mind? I think you'll have to ask Ben Stokes that, really. Uh, look, nothing's forever, but who knows what will happen. Uh, as I say, we'll just, at the moment, we just keep thinking about, let's we'll just try and enjoy what we've done now. Then we'll think about Test Cricket. Ben Stokes will be thinking about Test Cricket. I don't want him to have to worry about anything else apart from what's in front of him now, which is the Test Series in Pakistan, and then you've got New Zealand, then you've got Australia after that. He doesn't have to worry about anything else. What will be, will be. Would you consider having that conversation with him, though? I'll have every conversation with anyone, really. It doesn't matter. I'll never, I don't think you ever rule anything out. Um, but at the moment, we're just trying to enjoy what we've done so far. And Ben can enjoy it. I'm sure he's enjoying it as much as he possibly can. You mentioned Joss Butler and how he's evolving as a captain. Now, how much do you think is down to not having that weight of the test arena and being able to focus purely on his role as white ball captain? Yeah, possibly. You never know, really. I, I think Joss was always going to I mean, he's got such a good cricket brain. There's times when we sit around in selection meetings when we're talking about when I was out there for the first couple of weeks before the, the, the semi-final, where you're debating stuff and you're talking about team selections, you're talking about the mentality, the way we want to go and play. And Joss often, he would be the one saying, no, no, this is the way we're going to go. This is the way we want to do it. 
this is the team I want to go with. This is what I want to do at the toss, you know. And he's he's been fantastic like that. So I, you never know if not playing a bit of Test cricket, giving him more time. But yeah, I, I think Jeremy he'll just grow into this role more and more. And now, you know, it's so hard. I always think the worst time to start. It's a bit like me and this. England had a tough time, so it's quite a good time to take a job on. Actually, you never want to take on a job at times when a team's done so well. You've had such a good captain, Owen Morgan. But very, very quickly, Joss, Matthew Mott have managed to make this their legacy now or make this their team and their era, and let's hope it's a great one. Whose decision was it to recall Alex Hales? Because that was a gamble, but it's paid off. Uh, I don't really see it as a gamble, to be honest. I think that, you know, I remember doing the press conference um, announcing Johnny Bairstow as the opening batsman. I think you were probably on it. I'm at home doing a Zoom call. And at literally about a second before I do that, I say, Johnny might be injured. And I've then gone on and waxed on about how he's going to be our opener, not realising that he's had a pretty bad injury. So then we just sat down together. And how we work, we have a huge team of us now. There's myself, there's Mo Bobat, there's David Court, there's Joss Butler, there's Matthew Mott. There's so many people that input into selection. So it's very much a debate. We come up with what we think is the right answer, and that's how the Alex Howes one came about. So when you get down to it, I can never remember who came up with the actual decision. But he's got a big white ball future now. Is he back for good in, oh. in 20 over and 50 over cricket? Well, we'll see. You know, 20 over cricket, uh, sorry, 50 over cricket at the moment. You've got Bearstone and Roy have probably been the best opening partnership in the world that certainly England have ever had, and arguably in the world game. So Alex Howes will then have to try and force his way into 50 over cricket, but. Look, he's done fantastically well. And it wasn't just, right, you're just coming in for the World Cup and then we're going to bin you off again. You know, he's done fantastic. He's now a World Cup winner, which I'm so pleased to see. I spent quite a bit of time with him out there. I think he's a fantastic lad. Um, and I'm sure we'll see more of him in the future. Well, great stuff. Well done. Bask in the glory while you can. I'll it's try. very, very quick turnaround, as Rob says. England now play three one day as against Australia in Australia, while the others, test players, head to Pakistan for three tests in December before Christmas.